here in Austin. Let's give it up for Michael Moy. One more time. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And welcome to the 2012 National Flood Conference closing session. I know it's been a great week for you folks, and you've got to listen to many good presenters in the workshops and listen to good speakers up here. I hope you'll go home. I know you'll go home. You've learned a lot, and you'll go home with a better appreciation for the program and for the vision of the program going forward. But we have one more excellent speaker for you this afternoon. Our closing general session speaker this afternoon is Dr. Steve Murdoch. Dr. Murdoch is the Alan R. and Gladys M. Klein Professor of Sociology at Rice University. He previously served as director of the U.S. Bureau of the Census, having been nominated for the position by President George W. Bush and unanimously confirmed by the U.S. Senate in 2007. Prior to his appointment at Rice, Dr. Murdoch was the Luker Brown Distinguished Chair in Demography and Organization Studies at the University of Texas at San Antonio, and the Director of the Institute for Demographic and Socioeconomic Research. Before UT of San Francisco or San Antonio, he was a Regents Professor and Head of the Department of Rural Sociology at Texas A&M. He was named one of the 50 most influential Texans by the Texas Business in 1997 and one of the 25 most influential people in Texas by Texas Monthly in 2005. Dr. Murdoch is a member of the Phi Beta Kappa, Phi Kappa Phi, and Phi Eta Epsilon National Honor Societies. And he's here this afternoon to influence you. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Steve Murdoch. It's a pleasure to be here with all of you this afternoon. I must say I appreciate a very nice introduction like that. I, I don't always get such nice introductions, not because somebody wants to be rude to me, but because I'm a demographer. And I remember well, I was giving a presentation to a civic club in East Texas, and the gentleman who was supposed to introduce me had gotten ill. And so they gave my introduction my, to a, another gentleman, and uh, he wasn't ready for it, but two minutes later he had to give it. So what happens, he gets up and he says, you know, Dr. Murdoch's done a lot of things. He's done a lot of rural things, and he's done a lot of dim, dim, well, I guess he's best just seen as a rural demagogue. <laughs> I'm going to try not to be a demagogue today. What I want to talk about is population change. I want to talk about the change that is occurring. I will emphasize particularly the racial and ethnic compositional change that, we're, that is happening to us. We'll talk about something that some of us here, probably like me, find increasingly difficult to talk about, the aging of the population. And then we'll talk about some of the implications, including some of the implications for flooding and mitigation of such. Uh, I want to start out with this slide, and I want to apologize for a couple ways for this slide. I, I have a friend, well actually I have two friends, but one of my friends has told me, he says, you know what I like about you, Murdoch, is you take about 600 numbers, you put them on a slide, put them up in front of a bunch of people, and you say, as you can plainly see. Well, this is one of my as you can plainly see slides. And the other thing I want to apologize for, when you look at that slide, you will see uh, that there's going to be a number of slides, which obviously I use when I do things in Texas for Texas. And you'll see comparisons of Texas and the U.S. And understand that is primarily because Texas likes to compare itself to other nations. So, <laughs> really the most important part of that slide is the right hand most bottom number, that 9.7%. Which indicates that this was the last decade was the slowest, second slowest growing decade in percentage terms in, in the United States population history. Only the Great Depression years that were caught in the 1940 census had a slower rate of population growth. So this was an interesting period of time because we had slow growth, but as we see in a few minutes, that growth was concentrated both geographically and it was concentrated as well uh, among certain uh, groups. You can see here, this is an overview of, of growth, and you can see only Michigan, unfortunately, was the, of the state that declined in population. Nevada had the fastest growth. And if you look at the largest states in the United States, 
Uh, they varied in how well they did, but notice where all of these states, with at least one or two exceptions are, that is, they are primarily in the South and West. And that's been a pattern that has been apparent. Let's look at this just a minute. This is the fastest growing in population terms. Texas did have the largest numerical increase, even though it's, uh, as you can see, full 12 million less uh, than the, the state of California. It had uh, a substantially larger population growth with 4.3 million. When you look in percentage terms, notice where these states are from. They're all from the south and from the west, and that's a pattern that's important to understand. This is growth in the 2000-2010 decade, and what you'll see is that basically 85% of all growth in the country occurred in the South and the West. And that's not a, short, a, a, you know, a recent pattern. You look at 1900, and about 60%, 62% of all the people in the United States lived in the Northeast or the Midwest. About 38% lived in the South and West. By 2000, 40% lived in the Northeast and Midwest, and 60% lived in the South and the West. So these are long-term patterns. We'll talk a little bit about what those mean a little bit later. One of the things that many demographers across the country were predicting about mid-decade, last decade, was that this would be the, the decade that we witnessed the revitalization of large cities. They would come roaring back. Well, this is the largest 10 cities in the United States. And Keep in mind that the overall population growth of the country was 9.7%. How many of the cities up there grew by more than 9.7%? One city, San Antonio, Texas. And in fact, how anemic growth was for many of our large cities, and I don't want to pick on anybody here, but I'll simply point out that San Antonio, with 1.3 million people, had a larger numerical increase than New York did with about 8.2 million people. So our large cities didn't come back the way uh, we, many of us had, had thought it would happen. One of the other things that I think it's important to understand when you look at our growth, and particularly as we talk about the racial and ethnic diversity of that growth, is to understand the undocumented or unauthorized population. You can see on here that uh, that population we think got to about 12 million by mid-decade and actually declined. And if you've been reading the headlines, you see that almost all people, including the Pew Hispanic Center, uh, projects uh, that that growth has stopped uh, and, in fact, may be going the other way. Now, you may look at that and say, well, 11.8 million, I've heard that it's 20 or 25 million undocumented immigrants in the United States. Well, I'll answer it the way uh, Jeff Bissell, who does the uh, estimates of the undocumented for the Pew Hispanic Center and used to do it for the Census Bureau, I'll answer it the way he does, and I said, He'll say, well, if there's actually 20 or 25 million, something's very strange. And I'll say, what do you mean? He said, well, there's one thing you cannot hide, and that is dying. And he said, if there's actually 20 or 25 million undocumented immigrants, these are the healthiest group of people who have ever walked the face of the earth because they're dying like a group of about 10 to 12 million people. Well... Uh, if we start to look at the newest decade, we've got some now estimates for 2011. Pretty much the same characters growing and growing uh, relatively rapidly uh, as did in the 2000-2010. Uh, Texas, again, uh, is very rapid uh, population growth, whether you look at it numerically or in percentage terms. And I might say, I'm not a native Texan, I'm a native of the great state of North Dakota. And I can tell you this is the first time in my professional life that I've ever been able to say that North Dakota is among the five fastest growing states in America. Okay. Ah, another North Dakota. <laughs> you noticed how many there were? There was one clap. Okay. I argue the most important thing that's impacting the United States, however, is the change in its racial and ethnic composition. I'm going to show you a whole set of slides, so I want to kind of give you a little brief on what I want you to read. If you go over uh, to the percent slide column, you'll see, for example, that 1.2 percent and 4.43 percent under and so forth. The next column over, you'll see the percent of total change, and then the next two columns to the right of that, you'll see the change in proportion. So if we look at non-Hispanic whites, we see that they had a 1.2 percent increase. That accounted for 8.3% of population growth in the United States. 
meaning that 92% of all population growth was due to what we refer to as minority populations. Hispanics, African Americans, Asians, others, etc. And then you see that their proportion went from 69% to 64%. So we're going to look at a whole bunch of these. This will be the way to kind of look at them and understand them. You can see that this is very clearly what, when you look at the total of U.S. population, that population growth in America in this last decade and for several decades has been and is expected to continue to be from minority populations, particularly Hispanic population, which accounted for 55% of all the growth in the United States. Now, it varied a little bit by whether you were talking about the voting age population or the undervoting age population. And you see here, for example, that non-Hispanic whites account for about 27% of that growth, uh, rather than about 10% or 10.8% for, for the total pop. But still, if you look at the total population, even among that population, as you can see, about 74% of all the growth that occurred was due to minority populations. And if you look at the young population, the child population, here is what is really startling. We had a decline of 4.3 million non-Hispanic white kids from 2000 to 2010 and an increase of 4.8 million Hispanic kids. In fact, had it not been for the growth in Hispanic kids, we would have had the largest decline, one of the largest declines in our child population in the history of the United States. So very dramatic changes taking place, particularly in our child population. I want to do something very simple here. I want to look at the pervasiveness of growth in these groups by looking at maps of the U.S. I'm going to show four maps, one for each of the four racial and ethnic groups, Hispanic whites, Hispanics, African Americans, and others. If a county is growing in that group, it's going to be blue. If it's declining, it's going to be red. So let's take a look first at the non-Hispanic white population. You can see we have about 32 uh, 100 counties in the United States. About 1,700 of them had declines in their non-Hispanic white populations, and about 1,500 had growth in their non-Hispanic white populations. Now let's look at the Hispanic population. Remember, blue is growth, red is decline. Now you see some counties there that are pink. They're ones that the numbers were too small to actually talk about change. But if you look at the 2,800 counties, basically, that had enough Hispanics to count, there was growth in 2,700 and decline in 100. If you're one of those people that thought Hispanic population growth was in California, Texas, Florida, New York, and maybe a couple other places thrown in, you're wrong. It is pervasive growth across the United States. Let's look at the African American population. It was about growing counties, about two to one growth to decline. A lot of the decline occurring in the old southern parts of the United States. And if we look at the Asian population, there were lots of counties there in pink that didn't have enough uh, people of that particular racial and ethnic group to count. But of the ones that was, that of, of the ones that were, that about 1,700, 1,600 of the 1,700 counties had growth. So growth in minority populations was clearly uh, pervasive across the United States. Now some of you may also say, well, yeah, I know about central city growth. I mean, I know that's where...